Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Beef Short Rib Pastrami. Well, we love our pastrami around here and apparently you guys love it as well. See, about three years ago, just a little more than three years ago, we released our first pastrami video using brisket. And since then, it's been viewed literally millions of times. Thank you guys so much. Well, in those years, we've had time to perfect and improve this pastrami recipe and the method. And one of the things that I've learned is that you don't have to use brisket for your pastrami. You can pastrami just about anything. One of the great things you can pastrami is beef short ribs. See, these ribs are high in fat content, one of the most succulent pieces of beef you can possibly cook, and that means it's gonna be juicy every time. Now, that combined with the cure of the pastrami itself, pretty winning combination. So let's jump right in by making our brine for the pastrami. So the first thing we're gonna do is put together a little pickling spice. This is really a key ingredient as far as the flavor profile of the pastrami goes. So I'm gonna start off with some black peppercorns and some coriander. And we're just gonna to toast this off until it's fragrant. So that coriander is the first thing to really become fragrant, but I can smell the black pepper too, which means we need to pull this off before we scorch it. And then we're just gonna crack these open to really release all of the aroma. We don't need to go crazy with that. That'll do. So now we're gonna add the remaining spices. We had a tablespoon each of the black pepper and coriander, now a tablespoon of mustard seeds. A tablespoon of allspice berries, juniper berries, red pepper flakes, cloves, and then a teaspoon of ground mace. Lastly, we've got four bay leaves. I'm just gonna kind of break those up in there. And a cinnamon stick. And that's our pickling spice. Now the cure for our pastrami is a wet cure or a brine. So we're gonna start off with a gallon and a half of water, and then we'll add our flavoring agents to that. First thing we can add is a quarter cup of that pickling spice we just put together. And for the batch we're doing today, we're gonna to do three cups of our kosher sea salt, and a cup and a half of sugar. We're actually gonna water, water this down further with some ice here in a little bit. We're also gonna use some pink curing salt. This is the LEM Cure, it's a cure number one, sodium nitrite, two tablespoons of that. Now we've also got some fresh ingredients here. We're gonna do about 10 to 12 cloves of garlic. We're just gonna crush those down. You don't even have to peel them. The skins can stay on. But I've also got some fresh ginger now I happen to have this peeled already, but again, you don't really have to peel it. And I'm just gonna slice this up, nice and thin, do about an inch worth of that piece. So we're gonna throw in that garlic and ginger, give this a stir, and then we just want this to come up to a simmer. We wanna make sure we get all the salt and sugar dissolved, and that's all we're looking to do. Starting to wake up these flavors and aromas. So we're gonna be brining in our briner bucket here. I'm gonna to add to it eight and a half pounds of ice. So this is essentially the same amount of water that we have going, we're diluting it by half, and we just wanna cool it down super fast so that we can actually get the meat in there. So add our hot brine to the ice and just stir until that ice is melted. So we'll set this aside for now while we prep the short ribs. All right, so here we have our short ribs. These are from Creekstone Farms. They are prime short ribs. So this is about as good as it gets for Black Angus. 
So shout out to Creekstone for sending these over. We really appreciate it. They've done a great job for the most part of trimming this up. I'm just gonna see a little bit of this silver skin on the surface here where it's, we're gonna take that off. If it's hiding underneath fat, I'm not so concerned about it. When we think about how we're going to prepare this later as pastrami, we're gonna be slicing it anyway. So these little bits of silver skin become really small once they're cut into slices. But if we have it exposed, we might as well take it off. But when I get into some of this fat over here, I'm just gonna cut that off because I don't mind a little bit of that fat on the surface. I'm being finicky here. I really could stop this at any time. Let's take a look at the other side. So here we have the bone side. Uh, I'm not really gonna worry about doing much here. Typically what I will do with these ribs when I want the bones to come out of them anyway is I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a slit right on top of the bone and that just helps them to pop out nice and easy so we end up with boneless short ribs in the end. But otherwise, not gonna do any other trimming on those. So from there, our beef ribs can go right into our brine. So that's cooled down. Now you can throw a second one in here. They'll both fit and be submerged or you can just do the single one and we'll use the plate to lock it down in place so it stays completely submerged where it's gonna brine for a week. So during that week long cure, all of those flavors in the brine all of that pink salt, all of the salt and sugar, it's all working its way into the short ribs and we need to give it some time to get all the way to the center. So a week ago, I started brining a couple of racks, one of which is already on the grill. The other I'm gonna show you right now how we prepare it with a little bit of rub on the outside and get that ready to go in the smoker. All right, so here we have that rack coming out of the brine. I'm just gonna get this excess moisture off of the surface here. And you can see how this really changes over a week's time, the color on it. Here, I'll show you a fresh one. Right there. From that deep red, we can see how that salt has just affected the surface and it's gonna have a much more firm texture to it now as well. So we're gonna do a really simple rub for the outside. It's equal parts coriander, black pepper, and our Cattleman's Grill California tri-tip. I wanna break these down just a little bit, not all the way into a powder. I still want them to have some nice texture, but I want them broken up. And that's just about right. I'm doing these separately because they don't break down quite the same, the black peppercorns and the coriander. It's okay if some are still whole, you just want them kind of broken up a bit. So next we've got one third cup of our Telecherry black peppercorns. Same kind of deal here. Break it down a little bit, but not into a powder. And as you'll see here in a little bit, this chunky texture really going to help with the bark on the outside of the short ribs. And lastly, that Cattleman's tri-tip. So just a great steak rub. Kind of associate it like with a Montreal steak seasoning. All flavors that work really well. Add a little bit extra to this pastrami. Now I haven't rinsed this off. If I wanted to, I could rinse this off, get some of that excess salt off the surface, but there's really very little salt in the rub that we're putting on the outside, so I'm not gonna bother rinsing. I am gonna give it a little binder. We're gonna use this nice chunky Dijon, the Coslix. We'll go ahead and hit all the sides with the mustard. All right, so let's season this thing up. And be pretty generous with the seasoning. Let's just let that sit there for a minute, and start to attach. And hit the sides as well. Don't worry if you don't get it all right now. There's gonna be stuff left on the board. 
you can kind of mop that up with the meat before you head to the grill. All right, so we want to get that just really fully covered. And again, just let it sit for a minute so it really starts to attach. Well, today we're smoking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. We're running at 250 degrees with our contest mix of cherry and pecan pellets. Uh, I've got a rack that's been on for seven hours now, so we're gonna get a peek at that. Same time, we're gonna throw the other rack on and get started with the smoking process on that one. So here's what seven hours looks like on our pastrami ribs. You can ignore the brisket to the side. That's for another video that's coming up soon. But look at this bark that we formed on the outside. Gosh, that's looking good. Meat's starting to pull away from the bones. According to our probe, we are at 182 on the internal temperature. So we're gonna get that other rack on the bottom here. And no worries, bottom, top rack, either one's gonna work, especially with these beef ribs. You know, you've got these big bones that are a nice heat barrier. We're running at 250, so it's not like it's really hot in there anyway. So for now, we're just gonna keep this thing rolling at 250. I've got a smoke tube in there, especially with these big pieces of meat. It's kind of nice to inject some extra smoke, but we don't really need to do anything else right now. When it comes to cooking a big piece of meat like this, you always have that option of wrapping it in foil or paper uh, if you wanna expedite the process, if you wanna make this go faster. Uh, we've got time today though, so I'm gonna leave it open. Uh, it's gonna help that bark stay nice and crunchy on the outside. And we're still gonna get a super juicy center because of all that fat in the short ribs. Well, our ribs are starting to probe really tender now. They're at about 195 on the internal temperature. I'm gonna show you what that looks like as we're probing these, trying to feel for doneness. Now, a lot of times with a piece of meat like this, we may be going up over the 200 mark to try and get a really nice slice. But I'm thinking with pastrami, I wanna be able to shave this thin and it holds together, doesn't just crumble apart. So we're cooking to a slightly lower temperature today. You can see that bark's looking beautiful. You know, when I'm poking, there's just almost no resistance until I hit a bone. So that's looking really good. Again, this temperature, it's coming up on like 195. It's what our probe has been reading for the pit. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this off and let it rest a bit before we slice it. All right, well, this is all rested up now, so we're gonna go ahead and slice into it. Now, like we talked about before, just cutting that slit on the back side of the bones makes it real easy. Just pull them out of there. Now, there's gonna be some cartilage on the underside here. So you can either just slice all of that up and then kind of pick through this for what you want, or you can just slice it with the cartilage on and eat around the cartilage. We'll go ahead and take it off for now. Wow, that looks awesome. There's not much resistance there. So like I said, there's still some good stuff in here. Don't just throw this away. You can go ahead and pick through that because this is the kind of stuff like right here you want to throw in your eggs in the morning. But this is what we're going to slice up for some sandwiches. Wow, look at that. So we got that pink penetrated almost to that deepest part. We didn't quite get all the way through on our seven days. Probably could have gone another day or two. But man, look at that. That is a beautiful thing. It just falls right apart. Man. Woo. Oh man. That is the definition of melts in your mouth. All of that fat and connective tissue in the middle just breaking down to the point where this is just barely holding together now and that stuff that's what makes you feel like i'm eating the most juicy piece of meat i've ever had but this goes so much beyond 
just the texture because that flavor from the pastrami brine has penetrated all the way through that meat. It's not overly salty, but you've got all of those pastrami flavors coming out at you. And we threw a lot at this thing, but especially that steak rub on the outside with the coriander and the black pepper. That coriander and black pepper is signature pastrami flavor. It's fantastic. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. Enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.